Hey everybody, Charles for HumbleMechanic.com. Today we're going to be talking about the Blue Driver OBD Scanner. So today we're going to be checking out the Blue Driver OBD Scanner that pairs this Bluetooth device with your cell phone and basically functions like a scan tool. The setup has two parts. The portion that plugs into your data link connector, as well as your cell phone with an app that you download. Now, I tested this on two different cars. I tested it on my Passat out in the driveway, as well as a 2012 Volkswagen Touareg. The Touareg just happened to have a check engine light on, so that worked out really well. And I actually created some issues in my Passat so that we could really put this to the test and see what it was capable of. So, let's hop out in the Passat and check it out. So after we've paired our phone to the Blue Driver, this is the screen that we're going to get first. You can see you can read codes, clear codes, get any type of repair reports. We can collect freeze frame data, do a smog check, which basically is a readiness check, mill status, vehicle info, and we also have a cool flashlight that'll turn the, uh, the flash on our phone on. We're gonna start by going to read fault codes. Now, because the check engine light is not on, we have zero confirmed codes, but we do have one code pending, and it lists that code down here at the bottom. P0113, intake air temperature, sensor one, circuit high, bank one. And that's because I disconnected the intake air temperature sensor. Now if I were to shut the car off and start the car back up. So now that I've done a key cycle, you can see that we have one confirmed code and it'll still store the code as pending. We have the same code again because the sensor is disconnected. Now if we wanted to, we could go in and clear the fault right from here, but I don't wanna do that. I wanna actually go back and look at my freeze frame data for when the fault was stored. You can see here we have our fault, our engine load, temperatures, RPM, engine speed, and throttle position. We'll go back again. We'll do our smog check. Now our smog test failed because our check engine light is on and we do have one trouble code. We go in and we can look at our monitors. This is our readiness monitors. We can see what is set, what is not applicable, and then if I were to clear this code out, it would show these as unset. We can also get vehicle information on some cars, but we would have to enter the VIN in. It didn't pull it automatically. Um, on newer vehicles, it'll pull up vehicle information, our mill status, which is pretty cool. It'll tell us how long we've been driving around with a check engine light on. I got a screenshot here of a Touareg that I hooked the, uh, the, the blue driver up to earlier today, just to test it out there. We can also see all kinds of other cool stuff. We can, we can go ahead and do a review right from here. We can order more sensors. We can update the sensor and also contact the, uh, the folks at Blue Driver. And it looks like we can follow them on all their social media stuff, which is cool. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna try and clear this fault out. Now remember, this sensor is disconnected completely, so we may not be able to clear these faults out. We'll tap that warning. This action clears engine codes on your vehicle and does not fix any problems, it cannot be undone. I love that they have this warning because clearing the faults doesn't really fix anything generally. All it does is erase information that you may need to diagnose problems with your car. So we went ahead and cleared it. We got no pending and no confirmed codes. If we go back one screen and do our smog test, now we'll see that the light's off and the readiness is not set but we also have no code stored. So you can see here where our readiness monitors are yellow, not green. That means in North Carolina, for example, when we do a state inspection, we hook it up, we check those readiness monitors to see what tests have passed and haven't passed. And that gives us an idea of the condition of the vehicle. We can also go in and check repair reports. This is the VIN I worked on earlier with some faults stored. So there's no information based on this fault. This was a really weird uh, DPF fault on a Torag. Let's see what their sample report says. So this is a sample report of a pressure control solenoid, a P2716, and it gives you some causes of this failure and the top reported fixes as well, which is pretty darn cool. PCM update, replace transmission, and then there's other fixes as well. If you had a really common issue, that would be a great thing to check out. Now remember, that is just the most common things that fix these problems. It's not necessarily guaranteed that if you were to replace one of those parts, it would fix your problem. That's just the most common things that are seen. Now we can also look at live data. I've selected a few values here where we're looking at engine coolant temperature, 
calculated engine load, fuel trim, long term, and short trim. And the thing is, is when we erase that fault code, it erased all those learned values. But you can see here as I raise the RPM, you'll hear the engine get louder. You'll notice our green is changing. And I can crack the throttle wide open and you'll see it spike up a bit. So it's really cool that you can watch live data on this little, this tiny little screen with a simple Bluetooth device on and pair it to your phone and get this kind of information. And it's really cool that you can graph things like engine load, like fuel trim, and a ton of other selections in order to get a full understanding of what's going on with your vehicle and to help you diagnose a problem and not just go in and clear the code, which uh, again, I love that warning, it's super cool. So if we go back into the scan tool, we're gonna check faults again because I did not plug that sensor in. We'll see it still shows as one pending code. And until I do a key cycle, it's gonna show the code pending, not confirmed. I gotta say, I was pretty surprised at how capable this setup really is. Now, you gotta remember this is basically engine only. There are some manufacturers that this will support ABS airbag and transmission, but that's only the big three American cars. I wasn't able to do that stuff on either one of the Volkswagens that I tested it on. Now I was able to get a lot more information out of the Torag because it's a newer setup run on CAN bus, where my Passat isn't, so the information's a little bit limited. We also have to remember that this is basically a one-way scan tool, so we can plug it in and get a ton of information and even clear faults, but we're not gonna be able to do any type of coding or output testing with this as of right now. So on the plus side, it's fast. It was really fast not only to pair initially the Bluetooth with my phone, but the communication rate's pretty quick too. I really like that you have the ability to do graphs like we've seen in the video. Heck, that's something even our Volkswagen factory scan tool won't do. You can even save your, all your information into a PDF and email it. Also, the fact that they include all the really common repair information is a great resource, especially for the DIYer. Now, if I could change a couple of things, the main thing, I would put a key hook on this little device. So what can happen is, is this can actually get left behind. Now, if you're a DIYer using it on your own personal car, that's never gonna be an issue. But if you're, say, me using it on a customer's car, it's really easy to get out of the car and forget this little device. It happens on our scan tools at the shop, where this piece is essentially as big as my cell phone and a little bit thicker. Not only that, it beeps when it's not connected and they still get left in vehicles. We've had to run to customers' houses to, uh, to pick up our Bluetooth, uh, our Bluetooth head out of their car. So I would definitely add a key hook so that I could hang something on it so I knew that I would never forget it in a car. Also, don't forget that even though this has a ton of repair information built into the app, you still need to know what you're looking at. You can't just rely on what other people have done to fix a similar code to fix your car. You still need to understand what you're looking at and what you're dealing with. And remember, you're gonna be limited in size of your screen by whatever size the screen of your phone is. For me, this is a Galaxy S4, and I actually felt it was just about perfect in size. Now, if you had like an iPad mini that was maybe this big, that would be even better because you would have more space to work in. But for me, day to day, this would work really, really well. Overall, at 100 bucks, I think it's a pretty solid buy. It gives you a lot of engine diagnostic capability, as well as access to a lot of repair information that you might not otherwise have access to, especially for free. The other good thing is, when you buy this, you get the full version of the app. You don't have to pay extra for any of the repair information or the common repairs that are built into the app. It's pretty much 100 bucks plus tax, and you're good to go. So again, at $100, I think it's a pretty solid buy for anyone looking to get information out of not only their own vehicle, but other vehicles as well. So there you have it, the review of the Blue Driver OBD Scanner. Hey, if you have any questions or comments, post it in the comments section below. If you like the video, throw it a thumbs up on YouTube. I always appreciate that. You can also follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, the blog, humblemechanic.com, and obviously on YouTube. All right, guys, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.